mean, shit. Honestly, man. She's a bad thing. Fine as hell. Thick as fuck. Oh my god. That's my baby. Caroline. You know when your install is just eats? Like, I wasn't even done with this install, and it was looking just so ooh, slayed. Like, I just had to use these clips of me just being flabbergasted by my own work. Like, this is the intro, y'all, okay? Let's get right into it. Like, <laughs> calm down, girl. But no, for real, I really ate with this install. In today's detailed tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how I got this really nice Widow's Peak hairline, which is my new favorite thing of doing. I feel like it just really makes your wig look super natural when you add it to it, as well as how I get a really melted, glueless install. That not only is really easy and quick to do, but at the same time will last through this hot Texas summer that I'm currently suffering through. So if you're interested in any of those tips and tricks, let's get right into today's video. So this is how I did the widow's peak. I forgot to record this part, so I'm just going to do a freeze frame and try to like kind of explain how I did it. So after I made my hair into a middle part, I just go ahead and part out the smallest amount of hair to create a nice little peak in the middle. I like doing this on the mannequin because I can see how even it is. I like to pull out less than more. Like as you can see, I barely pulled out enough hair and I just pull it out right to the middle. And then once I've pulled it out and it looks exactly how I want it to look, I just go ahead and carefully pull out the hair. When I say carefully, I mean like carefully. Like I wanna make sure you're yanking the hair out from the root, but do not pull so aggressively and hard because some knots can be really big and hard to pull out and you will end up pulling a hole into your lace wig. I would even test it out with one strand first. The knots on this hair came out super easily, so it wasn't too much tension and like it just ripped right out. But some hair, trust me, will not come out that easily. But I just like to, I prefer to rip this hair out versus plucking it out or cutting it into a widow's peak because it just looks more neat and natural this way. If you cut it, it's not gonna look as neat. The knots get left and it just looks a lot better when you just pull it out. That's essentially how I create my widow's peak. Now to just clean up this bust down middle part, I'm going in and plucking right on that center line on my mannequin head and plucking every hair that is laying on the center line that is on the mannequin head. And I just, try, I'm trying to be a little bit careful not pluck too much here because I did over pluck a lot in this middle area prior. So I had to make sure I'm specifically just plucking those little hairs that go right down the middle. This helps widen up the part and also creates a clean part effect when you don't have any knots at all laying right in the middle. I haven't even pressed the hair out and y'all see how clean and neat this hairline is looking even with the slight over plucking like chef kiss pulling out those excess knots in the middle really helps clean up the part and this widow peak i don't know just makes such a natural looking hairline now i'm going to go ahead and press out my part with my flat iron i mean i'm so sorry with my hot comb but prior to that i want to brush the hair into the direction i want it to lay because i always have like a specific way i like my hair laying i like to brush it in that direction first and then hot comb it i feel like once i hot comb it it gets stuck in a certain direction, so I want to brush it first and then use my hot comb to mimic that same direction to press it all out. And the direction I like to press the rest of the hair is basically with everything going upward. So I press all of the roots, the sides, I press it all in an upwards direction. So I'm not going directly straight to the side, but I'm going upwards on the roots and then I start to move my hot comb towards the side. Hopefully visually you'll see what I'm saying. These little slight adjustments in your direction of pressing your roots out really makes a overall natural effect on your hairline now lastly i really like to take my time to press the front out that's how i get my wigs to be super flat and i like doing this on my mannequin head because i can't get this close and pressed on my own head without burning myself and my hairline and when i say pressing it the key for using your hot comb right is not the combs that is going to press the hair it's that thick part on the top of the hot comb so i like to make sure i take my time to really slow down and use that thick part to press along the hair to really get everything nice and flat and make sure you don't forget the back the back is very important the back has to be pressed back to cover those tracks having the back pressed as well will give you a very flat overall look on your wig and just like that without even having to install it yet you can see a nice pressed hairline you already know the hairline you already know the install is going to eat if it's looking like this on the mannequin head, okay? Like, I love pre-prepping my wigs like this because I get the most flattest, neatest installs. Now, I don't know if you can notice here, I do have a bit of over-plucking going on, not like directly in the middle, but on the side. So after I install it, I'm going to show you guys a little trick I like to do whenever I over-pluck because over-plucking happens to the best of us. No biggie. But now I'm going to go ahead and just do my regular installation process. Now let's get into installing the wig. So first thing that is key to getting that melted look with your wig and your lace is to tint your lace. It doesn't matter what kind of lace you have, HD, transparent, 
regular Swiss brown tinted to be your skin tone, your forehead color. And for me, I like to use my Maybelline Fit Me Foundation in the shade 356. This is like my exact color of my forehead. I like to buff that in mainly on the front of the lace that's going to be laying on top of your head. But also make sure you're like buffing it into the rest of the lace. Because when you part the hair, it does show it's going to be two different colors. But mainly focus most of that on the front. It's going to help me get that nice exact skin tone match. Now, you can't have a melted laid wig without you properly getting a good fit of the wig around your head. So next thing I need to do is I go ahead and just cut the lace around my ears because the wig never sits exactly on my head. It always fits around my ears. So I do have like a very detailed, like slowed down step-by-step -step tutorial on exactly how I do this because like it can be like a little bit a lot. It can be a lot as a beginner. I understand that. But basically, it's a, I just try to trace a little N shape around my hair my ears and I just part out where the wig is laying right on top of my ear and I just cut around that and it's gonna make sure it's fitting perfectly on both sides it's very essential if you have a frontal now that the wig is sitting nice and flush no wrinkles no bumps or lumps around my head in fact apparently if your lace is like wrinkling up around your forehead like, well, after you install it it's not that like your lace is too tight apparently your wig is too big better yet it means your lace is too big and you need to kind of find a way to make it smaller i don't know about that because i have a big head and my wigs are always usually too small but that's a whole entire different video but if you want a video on how to fix a wig that's too small or how to manage a wig that's too small i got y'all comment down below anyways back to our melted and install next i'm just prepping my lace by cutting in sections cutting your lace in sections is key for that melted look trying to install the wig all at one go one you're very ambitious i you, do you think you're better than me because i need to cut in sections for me to make sure i'm doing this right because each piece of lace especially on a frontal needs to be laid in a certain angle for you to properly get it to like be melted if that makes sense so sections is just the way to go here i just went ahead and cut off the side tabs i like using scissors to cut off my side tabs it just works a lot better and to lay down my lace i'm using my ebon lace spray and i like to just spray this directly onto where the lace is going to be laying and also for the sides like make sure i'm pushing that spray back because the lay the lace does sometimes sit onto my actual hair so i got to make sure i'm getting the whole area nice and sticky so the lace will really be laying down because if you have any dry spots it's not going to stick down at all especially on the sides now to really help me have something to pull down the sides i like to just use my now, usually I try to glue down this section with my blow dryer and then tackle the next section. But I've learned recently that I kind of have to glue these two sections at the same time because this little piece right here, freeze frame, where it meets, where like, because the hairline goes in and out, this little piece right here, for some reason when I do it, like I glue down this piece and glue down the other one, it doesn't want to stick. And it's always so hard getting... I always get lifting right here, so I've been now just gluing them at the same time. If you have this problem, comment down below because I can't be the only one suffering with this little piece right here. It's always hard to lay. Anyways, so I, for this section, I like to use an eyebrow razor to actually cut off the lace. I like using an eyebrow razor to cut off my lace because it's just... It just gives you more of a jagged raw cut. You never want to cut your lace straight. That is one way to not get a melted look is cutting it straight across. It was okay for me to do that on the side tabs because you can't really see the lace on that because I always have baby hairs covering it. But for these areas where you can see the lace a lot, a raw up and down cut is very necessary because instead of it being straight across your head, it's going to lay more naturally and disappear into your hairline for that wet lace look, not that wiggy, you know, line of demarcation that you get normally. Anywho's, now I'm just using some of the baby hairs and pulling them out. I like to pull them out for the sides at this point because I like to help. I like to do this to help me pull down the lace. Because I'm telling you, I'd be fighting for my life with these sides. And then I go in again. I spray a little bit more in between that space, like you just saw, to give some extra reinforcement. And I'm going in my blow dryer on like a warm-ish setting, but low power. I don't like having it blast too high. When it dries too fast, it gets too sticky too fast and too tacky. And you get like a lot of like residue when it gets too dry and too tacky too fast. And now I'm just going in with like a flat comb, anything that's flat, to just help really like push and press that hair and glue and everything together to get a really nice melted look. As you can see, it didn't stick at first. I literally had like a little bit of lifting. You can feel it when it's not sticking. So I have to like sometimes just pull it up breathe a little bit and just press it back in i can feel the tackiness still and just you know with patience keep pushing keep pressing and about like one ish minute one to two minutes it's going to be nice and stuck 
If it's not, just try again. But I will say only try again one to two more times. Once you start to get like a lot of buildup and you can feel it caking up, just take the wig off, clean your hairline, maybe even clean the wig and then do it again. Because after a while, when you keep spraying this Ebon spray, it starts to get really messy and it's just like not even going to stick anymore. You have to like clean your whole head and literally try again. But try again without having to clean your lace one to two times. Whew. I'm sorry, guys. For those of you who hate me when I talk too much, I hope I haven't lost you. But I'm sorry. These are the information you guys need, okay? But no fears here. For y'all who don't like me rambling and talking for too long and have beef with my voice, my beautiful voice, these next few clips, I'm just going to let you watch because it's really essentially everything I just said. And I'll come back when I have any more important things to say. So here, so this part is for my visual learners out there.
Once I was done doing the baby hairs, I'm going in now and just cleaning up the hairline a bit. First with the hot comb to just press everything back to get it nice and flat. And like I always say, you want to use the back part of your hot comb to do the pressing. The combs is just there to help separate through the hair. So I'm just going in and really pressing, pressing everything nice and flat. And I'm going in with my tweezers to just pluck any hairs that are kind of like sticking out and not working with my widow peak look. This little last touch of just plucking the hairs around the lace kind of really helps the widow's peak be more noticeable and it helps give you a more cleaner look overall. I don't know what about y'all, but this hair was definitely getting melted. Okay, you see that bust down middle part? That was, oof, look how excited I was just seeing how good my work was. The baby hairs in this moment was kind of big. I know that, don't worry about that. I do end up plucking them and cutting them down more after, but just, Bear with me, just get into the install itself. Like, <laughs> I was so geeked and gassed. I was like, oh, I did that. And just like that, folks, we have made it to the end of today's install slash tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this look, because I sure did. Here I'm just going in and, you know, doing some finishing touches to fill in the little extra over plucking that I did, but that was really it. I didn't have any clips of like the final hair straightened and everything, because I'm being honest, the hair is not straightened that well. I would say the quality of this hair is quite mid. Probably don't recommend it that much, but I would say I did like the install and I wanted to show you guys how I got this bust down widow peak. So it was worth posting regardless, but I will, if you're asking for my thoughts on the hair, eh, it's, it's just a little stringy. Like y'all see that? Like the hair is just not giving what I wanted to give, but the install was giving what I wanted to give. So therefore video was posted. But anyways, let me leave y'all alone and see y'all another one. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and peace out Girl Scouts. Goodbye.